Hi everyone, I'm Celeste. Welcome to my booktube channel, A Reader's Almanac with Celeste. Well, I'm just hopping on for a few brief moments today. My cell phone is unfortunately dying here, so I need to plug that in and recharge it. Uh, but I did want to just get on for a few moments with you to catch you up on my week and what I've been doing. I did not post a vlog on Sunday as usual. I was tagged by Gina Stainer of Gina Stainer Books, which is a fantastic channel here on BookTube, and I'll post a link to it down below so you can check out Gina's channel. Um, but she had tagged me for the reread tag, which I had never heard of, and it sounded intriguing. So thanks, Gina, for tagging me. Um, so yeah, um, the reread tag is apparently for people who like to reread books or who may not reread books on a regular basis, but who have some time-treasured favorites that they will go back to now and then. I am one of the latter category. I do love to reread my beloved children's classics and so I'm going to put kind of a spin on this tag from Gina and um, do the reread tag cherished children's book edition and because um, those are the ones I find myself gravitating to and returning to like old friends. So um, there are a number of prompts for this and the first is cozy reread so i'm going to have to go with little house in the big woods i absolutely treasure this book i know that it's problematic in terms of our consciousness today socially um, but there is so much that's beautiful about it so much that's worthwhile the prose style is wonderful um, the story that it tells is an important one um, and questioning the way that narrative is presented is also just as important. Um, I read recently an essay by Roxane Gay which deals with Little House and the Little House books and Laura Ingalls Wilder and um, I really like the take that she presents on it. Um, in terms of what is beloved to us and even if it is problematic in some ways and how we can tease that out and deal with that and discuss it. So um, in that spirit, the little house in the big woods. Oh, I have a sort of palimpsest in my mind of reading this book when I was a little girl um, at the Columbia School, which was a private girls' school, and us all sort of sitting there in our little uniforms and navy blue sweaters in the little red house uh, that was our classroom. And uh, I'll have to talk about that another time because that's a whole vlog in and of itself. Very, very special place and special memories. But um, I do remember reading this and um, reading about such cozy, cozy times. Laura, her sister Mary, Pa and Ma, Ma sitting by the fire doing her sewing um, and they're eating cornbread with molasses and Pa comes in from the snowy cold um, in the big Wisconsin winters and coming inside and falling off by the fire and then taking up his fiddle and telling the girls stories and playing his fiddle and uh, Laura of course cradling her beloved doll. So um, it's one of the coziest most cherished books from my youth and the palimpsest part of that is that layered on top of my own memories of youth being in that little classroom with my schoolmates and um, sharing this book together while the snow fell outside of our classroom window. So it's a really special book for me and it's one I do return to and I reread the Little House books probably about once every five years. And in fact, this past winter, I did reread The Long Winter, which I shared in a vlog with all of you, as well as The Little Cabin in the Woods that I made uh, from paper um, that was meant to be sort of a tribute to Little House in the Big Woods. So 
one of my absolute favorites. Okay, and then I've got my notes here. The next challenge was to name a fun reread. I have several contenders in this category, but I think for the purposes of a brief video before my cell phone runs out of juice, I'm going to go with My Side of the Mountain, written and illustrated by Jean Craighead George, and another treasured favorite of mine. Um, and this is a book about a little boy named Sam Gribley and he runs off to um, a mountainside um, to live on his own and to try to live off the land. And he lives in a hollowed out tree and makes uh, friends of the animals that live around him. And he befriends a little peregrine named Frightful. And um, this book is so special because, first of all, I've always loved Bill Dong's romans or coming of age stories, um, and so, and also survival tales. So, some of the ones in my pile here that I'm going to share with you definitely fall into um, several of those interconnected categories. And um, this book, um, I even love the chapter headings. Um, I find uh, that Frightful learns her ABCs, how a door came to me, I learned to season my food, the old, old tree, I find Gribbley's farm, um, I learn about birds and people. So it's a sort of a journal of his time on the side of the mountain, and it's just such a special, special book. Um, so that is one that I go to to reread because it sort of reignites an excitement in me about the ability to take care of yourself and fend against the wilderness and all of that. So um, I'll probably do a separate review on several of these and get into more detail, but um, this is just a wonderful, wonderful um, children's book to check out. And then another category here is palette cleansing reread. Hmm. So if I'm doing a palette cleanse from my usual rereads, I usually turn to history, social history, or poetry. And in terms of history, as you probably know from my past vlogs, I love all eras of history, um, but I'm fascinated by very strong women, Catherine the Great, uh, Joan of Arc, um, Mary Queen of Scots, Queen Elizabeth, Catherine of Aragon, um, Madame Tussaud was a fascinating one that I read. Um, and I also love uh, poetry that explores history. So for example, um, there is a poet called Frank X. Walker. He writes about the adventures of York, who was an African-American manservant who accompanied Lewis and Clark on the Lewis and Clark expedition. Um, but as it turns out, York is so much more than that. And Frank X. Walker just brings him to life, um, talks about how he saved those men's skins more than once, uh, what a fierce fighter he was, and um, just all of his adventures in the wilderness. And he was a sort of unsung discoverer as well. I wouldn't say discoverer, but um, an unsung adventurer and traveler. And um, yeah, so when I am cleansing my palette from my beloved children's vintage classics, I often turn to history or historical poetry. So check out Frank X. Walker. He's a, a great poet who I've had the honor of hearing do a reading in person here locally at St. John Fisher College. Um, let's see, series reread. Well, there are several here. Um, and if you've watched my channel at all, you must know some of these um, that I'm going to mention, but I'll just share a few. So in terms of sort of cozy vintage rereads, I think this is not children's, so this is sort of the one exception to um, this tag that I'm doing as a children's tag, and that is um, Agatha Christie. 
Um, the Miss Marple books. There's Agatha in the back there. This is one of my facsimile editions from Harper Collins, Collins Crime Club. And in particular, A Murder is Announced, I would say is one of, if not my favorite, um, Miss Marple. So in terms of a series, um, I guess I would definitely name Miss Marple uh, mysteries as one of my choices uh, that I go back to and reread and have fun with. Um, 450 from 450 from Paddington is another one. And then another series would be The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, The Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. When I was talking before about my memories of sitting in the Little Red Schoolhouse at the Columbia School with uh, my childhood classmates, this is another one that I absolutely treasure and I will definitely be talking more about this in an upcoming blog. Um, and then finally, as you know, I cherish Girl Sleuths and, of course, Nancy Drew. I love Nancy Drew. You've seen my Nancy Drew videos in the past, and so I would have to say some classics like The Hidden Staircase are among my favorites, and I absolutely go back and read Nancy Drew. Um, so yeah, that's another one. And then let's see, what else do we have here? Um, mm, emotional rereads. There are several contenders for this. I have worn out my copy of Mildred Taylor's Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry, but I'll attach a link for that below. Oh my goodness, that makes me cry every single time I read it, and I l literally have gone through two copies of that book, so I'm on the lookout for a third, but I definitely want the vintage cover that I love and remember so much. It's the story of a little girl and it's just such a powerful, powerful story. You have to check it out. And then of course, The Doll's House by Rumor Godden is another favorite of mine. You know I love Rumor Godden. This is a lovely, lovely story um, about Toddy Plantagenet, who is a small Dutch doll and her adventures and um, other dolls moving into the houses and so forth and um, oh, love 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 this book so that's another one um, and that really evokes emotion in me because it just takes me right back to my bedroom on Westfall Road uh, which is where I used to curl up and read it um, what else? Oh, this one, which actually was covered in my very first video that I did one year ago, August, and that is Island of the Blue Dolphins. So please check out that video because I go into a great deal of detail about this story so close to my heart. Love this character. Uh, love her story. I remember her trying to escape this island that she's marooned on and she's in her little boat, her kayak, and she's trying to navigate by starlight in the Pacific Ocean. It is just uh, so wonderful in so many ways. So Island of the Blue Dolphins and that's by Scott O'Dell and that is I think a Newberry, yep it's a Newberry medal winner. So that's another one. And then comfort rereads. I guess I would go to one of the following three. Now here's a really beat up copy. Mr. Popper's Penguins by Richard and Florence Atwater. This actually is my copy from when I was a little girl. And uh, look at how beat up this is. Uh, it says on the back, it was hard enough for Mr. Popper to support himself, Mrs. Popper, Bill, and Janie Popper. The addition of 12 penguins to the family made it impossible to make both ends meet. Then Mr. Popper had a splendid idea. The penguins might support the poppers. And so they did. So memorable to me are the illustrations that are in this. I'll just show you one here. But, um, and I remember this uh, from my time at that same school, but um, just all of these adventures with the penguins. I re Look at this one. Oh, I've got to show you this illustration. It's marvelous. I love sort of monochromatic illustrations that have one color added. So black and white and then one color, in this case blue. And that's what you'll find throughout this book. I think the illustrations are just 
amazing. And um, who are these illustrations by Robert Lawson? So look at this title page. Beautiful and such a fun story. And you may have seen the movie with Jim Carrey, but read the book, read the book, read the book. And then um, two others really fast. Julie of the Wolves is one that I go back and reread. And that is a comfort reread for me because I always turn to this in the winter time. It's about a little girl who ventures out on the tundra way up north and her adventures um, on the tundra. Um, it's a coming of age story as well and uh, fending off, um, you know, predators and taking care of herself and growing up. Um, so that's one. And I always read this with a cup of cocoa next to my little electric fireplace. And finally, another one that brings me right back to first and second grade is The Cricket in Times Square by George Selden. Look at this illustration. Anything that has little mice and little cats in it, I'm just a goner. I, I meant to bring up my copy of Miss Bianca because that's another series by Marjorie Sharp, um, which I absolutely love and it's a cozy reread for me as well. Um, and these illustrations are also by Garth Williams and this is a lovely, lovely story. Um, yeah, I'm trying to see if there's like a quick synopsis in here that I could do for you. It's just a cozy, cozy read. Look at this, look at this. I mean, it's wonderful. There's a, it's a cricket box and there's the cricket. Um, so yes, the cricket in Times Square. I love it. So those are my rereads for the reread tag. Gina, thank you so much again for tagging me. So if you would like to do this tag, please consider yourself tag or in the comments below or message me separately and say, I would like to be tagged and I will absolutely tag you. So um, that's it for today. My phone is about to go out, but I just wanted to say, hey, have a wonderful week. And starting next week, I have decided to start posting my videos on Tuesdays rather than Sundays. Throughout the past year, I've experimented with a number of different days. I had finally landed on Sundays for a while because I thought that was the best day to do it, but I'm really finding that Tuesdays work out best for me. So look for a new video next Tuesday and we'll see you real soon. Bye-bye.